Alan Anders, what's the upshot? Well, the upshot is that these awards seem to have been catching at least some industry observers with um, a bit of surprise. The awards themselves were rather unusual and atypical for U.S. investors. And also the magnitude is rather staggering. It's $3 billion split up among an unknown number of, of executives and board members. So while this detail has been out there, has been buried in regulatory filings when it, when it was reported today, it certainly added to the uncertainty that we've seen around the situation with Didi in, in recent days. So, so why were the grants issued and who are we talking about here in terms of the recipients? So we don't know a whole lot. We know that they are currently worth around $3 billion, and we know that they were issued to an un unspecified number of senior executives and board members. We don't know to whom or why. Um, it is worth no noting, though, that Didi is a controlled company. The two co-founders control the majority of the shareholder votes. So an outside observer may conclude that there's a degree of self-dealing here, and that's a detail that rarely sits well with U.S. investors. So how does this compare to what other companies do when they list? Was this unexpected? Yeah, so grants of this kind, when a company goes through an IPO, two founders and, and senior executives are pretty typical. What's special with these grants is that they were stock options granted with a near zero strike price and no vesting period. It essentially means that these are free shares given to executives. And that's something that we don't really see in the U.S. We've seen it occur in China from time to time. Um, but in that sense, it's just, you know, another wrinkle to this whole situation and probably makes investors feel even more um, <laughs> uncertain and uncomfortable uh, given the backdrop um, of, of the situation in, in recent days.